So seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. So if we seek first the kingdom of God, if we seek God's counsel, and then it's the right use of the energy, the right use of the guidance that we're getting, the right use of God's love and light and energy that flows through our life. Because sometimes we get busy with our life and we get into our will. And sometimes we misqualify energy. So it's to begin to use uh, our energy rightly, which is very neat. And uh, the divine dip was awesome, awesome. That will be done. You know, it's, uh, it's really neat as we continue to grow and expand in our consciousness, how it is getting a little easier to let go. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today is releasing to renew. Because we have to let go. we got to let go so that we can receive greater. And, and so that's our directive at this moment in time. That's the step we're standing on. It's time for us to let go so that we can receive greater. And as we receive greater, we can begin to give greater. So if we let go, we can grow. But if we resist, we're going to just persist in the misqualification of our energies. So it's like letting go to grow. <clears throat> so uh, releasing and letting go. This is the time, you know, the new year, everybody uh, sets uh, New Year's resolutions and they're ready to let go of the past and move into the new year. We've had that idea, we've had the thought, I'm ready, I'm ready to let go. This doesn't serve me any longer. And so that we might get a glimpse of what we'd like to see in our world, what would we like to manifest or demonstrate. And so we have to let go in order to receive the energy and then use that energy rightly to manifest that which we're seeking in our heart. I want to read uh, from the Aquarian. This is um, chapter 34, and it's a, a parable uh, on the um, husbandman that prunes the, the vineyards. And, uh, and Jesus is in India, and he's uh, there uh, studying with the masters and, and then teaching the people. And so there was a, a group of people, and so uh, he was... Um, teaching him. He's going to tell him the story. And so uh, Jesus spoke a parable. There was a vineyard all unkept. The vines were high and growth and leaves and branches great. The leaves were broad. Hey, sweetie, you can come up here. The leaves were um, broad and shut out the sunlight from the vines. The grapes were sour, small, and very few. The pruner came, and with a sharp knife, he cut off every branch and every leaf, and so that there was nothing left but the stalk on the ground. And so all the people came by and said, You foolish man, what are you doing? There are not going to be any grapes when we get to harvest. And he said, Well, just relax. Don't worry about it. Lo and behold, because he pruned back the vine, the leaves grew big again, and the grapes were abundant, and for many days they carried the fruit of the vine off to their winemaking places and jams and things like that. And uh, always teaching and te telling parables because this is the way that people could understand at whatever level of consciousness that we're at. But then he goes on to say, Behold, the vineyard of the Lord, the earth is spread with human vines. That's us. The gorgeous forms and rites of men are branches, and their words are leaves. And these have grown so great that sunlight can no longer reach the heart. There's no fruit. Behold, the pruner comes. And with a two-edged knife, he cuts away the branches and the leaves of words. And naught is left but unclothed stalks of human life. The priests and they who are pompous show rebuke and send the pruner away. The harvest time will come, and they who scorn the pruner will look on again and be amazed, for they will see the human stalks that seem so lifeless 
<clears throat> bending low with precious fruit. And now here the harvesters rejoice. And I love nature. Nature is one of our greatest teachers. We can just watch and see the balance of nature, the flow of life, the cycles that it goes through. And we're, we are nature. We're part of that growth, that whole process. And anyone that here that does gardening or uh, husbandry and taking care of their properties know that we have to, to prune our trees to make them healthy, to make them stronger, because that dead wood and brush around everything isn't healthy. And so like in this parable where the earth is uh, the vine of human, human lives, and uh, the leaves and vines, uh, he was saying, were the uh, rituals and the laws that had been placed upon them. And then these uh, vines and leaves kept the light from within of the human beings. And then the husbandman came with a two-edged sword and he pruned the vines with wisdom and with love. And another thing that us gardeners knows is when we prune our trees and plants, we do it lovingly. We connect with them because they are alive and they do have consciousness. And that's part of being in right relationship with all of life. And so we have this divine love within us that we can use, and we have that divine wisdom that we can use, and we can be guided in the pruning of our plants and trees and our property. And then we can look at, you know, maybe the dogma and the rituals and the laws that keep us from being the radiant light I am that keeps the fruit from blooming, that keeps the light from expressing and nurturing not only ourself, but our brothers and sisters. When we begin to look at, in our life, uh, what is limiting my expression? What is keeping me from receiving greater? What's keeping me from expressing greater? And so, uh, Jesus was talking about their religious dogmas that were limiting the expression of the individual. He ran into conflict because he challenged the caste system in India, you see. Uh, and that was a, a dogma and rules that really kept the individual light from shining. Because if you were a certain class or caste, if it wasn't yours to do, you couldn't do it. So he said, hmm, my father God sees the good in all. And so that was his story of maybe some of these laws and some of the rituals and dogma that's covering your people need to be pruned back a little bit so that we can begin to see the innate good, the innate God that's within all. And then that allows that to begin to grow and blossom. We're living in a time where we're beginning to, uh, a lot of people really let go of that which no longer feeds us and service, serves us on a spiritual level and also on a physical level. We're giving ourselves permission we're given ourselves permission to, to really look with our eyes open. Because for a real long time, we just made this agreement where I won't look at you and you don't look at me. And we'll just bumble along through life. But that doesn't serve anybody. See, that keeps the light from shining in and it keeps the light from shining out. You see, that universal heart is love. And that's what we're to be open to as it flows to us and through us. That's how we begin the transformation that's going on.